This is a perfect example showing Coltrane's direct solo approach. I do not want to waste your time with further intro stuff. No one talks about Coltrane's direct approach. What I mean by Coltrane's direct approach is when he's playing directly into that target note, using mostly just natural chord notes and scale tones. How he, without a lot of bebop chromatics and chromatic enclosures, plays such clear and understandable lines. A standard bebop line or chromatic line could easily sound like this, and immediately you hear the less direct sound. You can also go all in chromatic like this. I personally think that the lines using a lot of chromatic notes just sounds a little bit weaker. So why do you need this? When you dig into this you'll get beautifully very clear and understandable lines. Because you'll avoid the sometimes confusing chromatic sounds. And you're always moving the line towards the upcoming target note and hitting that directly on the head. Which creates a lot of clarity and direction. Further Coltrane's direct approach utilizes a lot of the scales and the chords you're already practicing. It's just up and down those chords and scales. Because you're using a lot of these basic forms. It's a plug and play concept. And this is maybe the biggest motivator. And you'll realize how much more powerful your lines sound when playing mostly diatonically and hitting all those target notes. You really need to think towards that target note. I'm starting out with playing a direct line into that C. The chords are a basic 5 to 1 chord. And with these short lines you go directly into the C major chord hitting all those target notes. So let's say you want to play a full bar of G7, so 4 beats. You will need to fill out the rest of the bar. Here I'm taking Coltrane's own example using the bebop scale going up. Using this bebop scale and the chromatics in the bebop scale is of course not wrong. Because you're hitting that target note right on the head where it needs to be. It's a very clear G on that G7 and this line sounds great. But again we can easily convert this line into using the diatonic tones, playing an enclosure to the G. Diatonic playing adds a lot of clarity to your lines. When you are staying in the diatonic scale, playing C major over chords that are in C major, which sounds pretty logical, you will have a lot more clarity to move around. You will be much more clear in your expression. I'll keep the last part of the line where I started. Only change the first part of the line to see how I can change that and make new licks. When adding the first part of that phrase to the bar, I not only have the C at the end of the bar as a target note, I also aim for the tone on the 3, that G. And the most important thing is that I keep the line as clear as possible. There's a lot of ways to make that clear. In this line you see that I'm not playing directly into that G. I'm actually making a third jump down from the B to the G. The first part of that line is only chord notes. So the F, the 7th, the G, the root, the A, the 9th and the B, the 3rd. This makes this approach super clear and very much focused into the chord. And the jump doesn't get in the way for the rest of the line. The message from Coltrane is pretty clear. Play the most direct and melodic way into that target note and hit that right on the head. In this little lick I'm playing up that F major scale. Instead of going straight up I'm making an enclosure to that B. Playing the A and the C, moving towards that B and then leading down to that target note the E. This gives you a clear idea how you can use an enclosure to hit that halfway target note where the line changes the direction and going down to resolve. We'll get into many more enclosures later in the video. When you listen to this lick you see that the direct line is maybe not always the prettiest, but this is definitely the most direct way. And Coltrane himself would occasionally do this. So from bar 2 to bar 3 he's just playing down that F major chord hitting that F on the third beat of the second bar. But you can get the same result in many many ways. And here I'm going to show you a few options. It's basically about exploring the options, how you can hit your target notes in the best and most melodic way. In this line I'm not doing anything wrong, but it sounds wrong, because I'm hitting the wrong target notes. I'm hitting that C and that E on the first and the second beat. When you add the chord notes on the beat, you get the sound of that chord. And in this example the C and the E decides what chord is heard, and that's the C major. So basically you're playing C major the whole way. You also see that the C and the G chord are quite close to each other. They have two common notes, the G and the B. 
But if you don't want to use the whole scale, try different options. So here I'm actually hitting the E on the first beat and the C on the second beat again, but I'm going down. So that B makes a huge difference. The leading tone of the scale leading into that C makes it sound completely different. The E is the 13 and that B really wants to go to that C. I've used the Coltrane's direct approach so much in my own playing and I can really understand if you want all these exercises and all these licks written out. In the lesson manual PDF I have of course added all the lines plus a bunch more that you can use to play and to practice and add directly into your playing. And of course everything's written out in all 12 keys and the link is in the description for you to go and download it. <laughs> You probably want to extend the lines playing more bars. I'm adding a D minor in front of that G7. Playing basically the same line as before. You see I'm using that F, G, A, B. But I'm using this on the D minor now. This is because I'm leading towards that C and that C is so strong going down that D minor chord. I can use the same line. But also the chord notes of the D minor are close to the G7. F. And A. The strongest thing in the line is that I'm leading to that C going down that D minor chord. In this way, if you have strong target notes, you can use some of the same lines on all three chords. Maybe you have already seen this, but on that G7, I'm playing the full scale down. Of course, I don't want to get in trouble, but I really want to show you that this is possible. This scale also aligns all the chord tones of C major. The G, the E and the C. But if you look closely, the first six notes are all G7. The B, the A, the G, the F, the E and the D, all G7. And when the G7 is this strong, the C just becomes a passing tone. And when I add this G and that B at the end of the line, everything points towards the target note, that C. Your lines towards the target note must be strongest. You see, I'm using a quite big jump here. That's not a direct approach, but what's up with this? Coltrane does this a lot when he's playing lines. <laughs> and again, the target notes decide what's happening. What we are supposed to hear in this line is the G, the F and the E sound. These three notes leading towards each other. Coltrane is deliberately adding these descending target notes into his playing. <laughs> Line, I'm already from the C on aiming for that B on that G7 and then at the end I'm aiming for that C. So here I changed the G7 line a little bit so moving that C up at the end. This makes the three target notes a little bit clear. The C, the B and the C. Another nice trick in the scale Coltrane uses a lot is playing thirds in the scale. But why would he do that? Because thirds are all enclosures on the follow-up note. The third in the scale is an enclosure of the following note, so you always have a target note coming after the third. Adding thirds to your lines is a great way to add enclosures into your lines and also getting out of the scale going up and down sound. The enclosure in the beginning of the line leads towards that B and that B just goes directly down to that C. You can basically add the thirds into any of your lines and you get these beautiful target notes you're hitting right on the head. Instead of endlessly going up and down the scales, try add a little part where you're playing thirds in the scale and use those enclosures. Here make a double enclosure into the C and the B. Another great feature Coltrane is using is adding a chromatic approach note under the tone he's going to. The F sharp in this line is leading towards that G on that G7. And it's a really nice way to emphasize the G going up that scale. <laughs> Try playing this exercise where you're playing a chromatic approach note from under and adding an enclosure. The diatonic enclosure encircles the next tone where you're adding an approach note. <laughs> Tweaking the line a little bit from before using that chromatic approach note twist. It just adds a little bit extra besides playing the scales up and down. 
But going the opposite way of the chromatic approach note is a great way to turn around the line. The turn is when you're on a note and you play one step up the scale and down again. You're basically just continuing your line where you came from. Try this exercise and train the turn and add the turn into your licks like this. You can use the turn as a part of your scales. Take out a part of the scale at a few turns. To really benefit from this, I would encourage you to practice these Coltrane direct approach lines in more keys. This approach becomes so much more effective and so much more usable if you do that. On Patreon, in the lesson manual, all the exercises and all the licks are written out in all 12 keys and the download is super easy. Coltrane's direct approach is heavily linked into how he's using four note cells. You want to dig further and get super inspired? Check out this video featuring the power of Coltrane's four note cells. Play music, have fun.